Question four. So make sure you've read the information at the top. It's just a normal distribution. You're given the mean, you're given the standard deviation. Find a probability that the flight, the next flight takes less than 145 minutes. So I've defined a distribution here for x with the mean 150 and standard deviation 10. So I've written 10 squared, because remember, we always write the variance here. Um, what I haven't written here, and I probably should have, is what x is. Uh, but I'll simply say it. X will represent the um, the time in minutes that the next flight takes, and the probability that the next flight takes more, uh, less than one hundred and forty-five minutes. We can get straight out of the class with um, with those parameters, uh, and, and we get zero point three zero nine. Ask your teacher if you're not sure how to extract that result. That's a nice, easy three marks. Part B, a little bit more interesting question. So we're given, we're going to find a new variable here, y. Let y be the time taken for the next flight from London to Berlin. And we're told that it's normally distributed with mean 100 and standard deviation d. Then we need to make sense of this question here. Now, they use, they use this word given. Now, be careful. This isn't given like an A given B question. They're just giving you a piece of information and asking you to use that. So this question could just as well have been worded um, with a sentence starting here. 15% of the flights from London to Berlin take longer than 115 minutes. Full stop. Capital F and find the value of the standard deviation d. So the given is, is don't get confused here and start trying to use uh, a given b like we did in an earlier question. Um, it's just giving you a piece of information. So how can we write this as a mathematical sentence? Well, 15% take longer than something. So the probability that the next one we're all normally distributed, it takes longer than 115 minutes is 0.15. If 15% of them take longer than 115 minutes, then the probability that the next one takes longer than 115 minutes is indeed 15% or 0.15. Okay, um, because we don't know D, we don't know the standard deviation, we're going to have to use the standardised normal distribution to, um, to make any progress now. So the next step probably is to convert this into Z language. So the value we're given minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And that's still equal to 0 0.15. Now the standardized normal, just sorry, the inverse normal distribution function on your class whiz is not set up for greater than, it's set up for less than. So before we go any further, I think it's important to just sketch out the bell curve. Okay, you might be able to do this in your head, but sketch is always recommended. We, uh, we know the mean, but this is the standard normal. So it's in terms of z, so the mean is zero. And the probability that z is greater than some value, this is the 115 minus 100 over d is 15% or 0.15. And of course, therefore, obviously, because the total area is 1, this bit here must be 0.85. So my method here would be to say, um, to go any further, I'd write first probability that z is less than Okay, I'm going to simplify that numerator because it's just 15 over d uh, is 0.85. Great. Grab um, your class whiz, go to inverse normal. We're going to use um, standard, sorry, we're going to use the yeah, standard deviation 1, mean 0, uh, and the area 0.85. And that's going to give us that the value in here is equal to 
three, six, four, straight out of the class with. And that gives us the final value of D by simply rearranging of 14.47. OK, part C. So first read carefully here. The time x minutes, we're back to x. I'm going to come over here and to do part C over here in the space. x has a normal distribution with mean, mu, and this time we don't know anything about the standard deviation either. So all we know is that x is normally distributed. So I've written that there, but to be honest, it's not particularly helpful. And then again, we're given some information, and then we're asked to find it. Once again, this is, again, this word given doesn't really need to be there. It's just saying, you know, here's some information, work something out. Now this question requires you to um, draw a graph. It also does indeed have this given. So this given here is quite different from this given here. This first given is giving us some information. So just cross it out if you want. Here we are, here's a sentence. The probability that x is less than mu minus 15 is 0 0.35, work something out. So to make sense of this, draw a graph. got mu in the middle and the probability that x is just some, sort of some value yeah, on the kind of horizontal axis here and that, that probability that that's less than mu minus 15 well mu minus 15 is going to be below mu it doesn't matter where you draw it's a sketch so let's call that mu minus 15 and the area beneath that we're told is 0.35 Okay, so given this information, find something. Right, again, we need to do what we did in an earlier question and think carefully about this. Probably to x greater than mu, mu, sorry, mu plus 15, given that x is greater than mu minus 15. Well, if we use uh, the formula, I'll write it over here out of the way, probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. We're going to use that formula by first defining what A is. A is the statement that X is greater than mu plus 15 and B is the statement that X is greater than mu minus 15. So to work out the answer to our problem, we need to work out the numerator and the denominator here, fine, based on this information that we were given in the question. So the probability of A intersection B, that's the probability that A and B both happens. Now think carefully about this. X is bigger than some value add 15, and X is bigger than that value take away 15. Just think for a moment about something else, just related to this question, but with different numbers. If I told you that I'm thinking of a number that's bigger than 12 and it's bigger than 8, you know that you don't need the information that's bigger than 8, do you? Because it's bigger than 12 kind of, kind of beats it. So the probability of A intersection B here is in fact just the probability that... Oops, sorry that um, x is just greater than mu plus 15. Because if it's bigger than mu plus 15 and bigger than mu minus 15, it must just be bigger than mu plus 15. And that we can get from our graph by, by symmetry. Because it's completely symmetrical, I can draw another line here at mu plus 15, and this area here must also be 0.35. Brilliant, so that is 0.35. Okay, probability that, uh, is a probability of B, which is our denominator. 
probability that x is greater than mu minus 15. Well, hang on, we haven't drawn it on the graph yet, um, but we can. Greater than mu minus 15 is all of that, which of course is 0 0.65, because the sum of that value and that value um, on the graph must be 1, because they add up to the whole area. So we have just simply 0 0.65 here. Final answer then. 0.35, numerator divided by 0.65, denominator, which gives us 7 thirteenths as our final answer.